It is literally one of the darkest movies you'll ever see, yet it features a fantastic story set in a world full of absolutely stunning imagery. Yes, we're talking about Dark City, and this is Sign 5. Dark City was created by Alex Proyas and was heavily inspired by the film noir classic The Maltese Falcon, the original Twilight Zone series and early German Expressionism. Without doubt one of the most significant aspects of the film and the reason why it's so highly regarded by both fans and cinephiles is its production design, cinematography and visual style which would not be out of place sitting alongside luminaries such as Blade Runner. Despite being shot in colour, it would be easy to imagine the film in black and white, as all the colours are both muted and monotone, which makes complete sense as the darkness nullifies the hues, which in turn accentuates the noir style even further. Somewhat surprisingly, one of the true ironies of this city's design is that because of its nostalgic flair, coupled with the overall mood of the environment due to the contrast between light and shadow, it is actually a place you would want to visit despite the absence of garishness or visual excess a la Las Vegas, Tokyo or New York City. Ultimately, it's a city of hidden mysteries, which is why it is so appealing on a visceral level. When watching the film for the first time, one of the key questions worth asking is what time period is the film set in? As the entire city has been created from the memories of the captives, it's highly likely they were abducted in the late 1950s as the technology seen in the film doesn't seem to be beyond the 1960s. If this is indeed the case, then how many people were actually abducted? Was it an entire city's worth, and if so, were they all taken in one go? As we discovered during the film's climax, the city itself is just a disc floating in space, with the alien stranger's habitat located below. Due to the stranger's dislike for sunlight, the disc is intentionally turned away from the nearest star, thereby keeping the city in perpetual darkness. One good question to ask is where does all the food come from, as the city clearly has no agricultural facilities. Maybe it's the strangers themselves who create all the food using the tuning process, much like how Murdoch creates all the beaches as seen at the end of the film. As for the people themselves, being permanently trapped in an artificial world where they live and experience all number of different lives and personalities, one can only wonder how long this has been occurring. Dr. Schraber himself states that the imprinting has occurred dozens of times, so conceivably the alien world of Dark City has existed for at least a number of months, if not close to a year, maybe two. As a consequence of this, one question to ask is how are the people replaced when they die? Remembering that up until their demise, the aliens themselves inhabit the corpses of the dead. With children existing in the city, though whether any were born there or not is unclear, there is a question of whether the city can sustain population growth as the number of people present is already quite vast. As for the tuning and imprinting process itself, the film suggests it's a reasonably quick and seamless process, though in reality it would likely take a bit of time to perform, especially if Schreiber himself is responsible for all the imprinting. With that in mind, pun intended, you have to wonder how long a person stays as they are before they get re-imprinted. When you look at the rogue Walensky, who appears to have been in his condition for quite some period of time, the strangers clearly aren't in a hurry to fix him up. Not only that, but even Walensky states that what happened to him and Murdoch also happened to other people as well, so you have to wonder just how many people have been impacted. One notable oddity within the film is the strangers' aversion to sunlight and water, both of which usually represent the key ingredients for the flourishing of life. Regarding the latter, an unusual contradiction in the film is the inclusion of areas featuring water, such as the canal and the pool with Schreiber frequents. So it's somewhat of a surprise these things are allowed to exist. Needless to say, clearly it would never rain in the city, even though paradoxically the ground is often wet. Despite the climactic battle between Mr. Book and Murdoch resulting in a victory for the humans, the reality is everyone is still stuck in a foreign world with no sign of escape. Moreover, with people now living their lives with the final imprints they received, one can only wonder if the city can actually exist in harmony, especially if people ever learn the truth of their predicament. In the end, Dark City is a fantastic movie to watch, though be aware there are two versions of it, the theatrical release as well as the director's cut. The primary difference is the theatrical release features an overdub by Schreiber, which is very similar to the Deckard narration from Blade Runner, whilst the director's cut doesn't have this at all and is the preferred version to watch. So while you warm up your machine to get some tuning action happening, be sure to join us again for another Sci-Fi Spective.